with the Intel Extreme Masters already making headway in Singapore, one does wonder where the esports scene can go from there, from an international standpoint as well as from a local standpoint in Asia. We're going to talk to a few figureheads about how the scene goes from there and what's in store for the future. It's, I mean, it's exciting. I mean, StarCraft 2, it, it is the biggest RTS ever outside of Korea, for sure. That's awesome. I love the fact that there's these events that are getting 50,000 live streaming viewers. Lots of people are coming out to the events. I would say it might have felt stronger and more exciting in 2010 and 2011. 2012 now, we seem to be in a dip. Everyone's sort of waiting for Heart of the Swarm to come out. There's some balance issues and there's some issues in the community. And So right now, it's, I would say we're in a rough patch. The StarCraft 2 community is in a rough patch, but I'm hoping that you know Heart of the Swarm will pull us out of that. So 2013 for esports could be enormous. Uh, the plans for Season 3 are phenomenal. They are massive. Uh, I can't go too much into what I know because there's stuff I know that I'm not sure whether it's public or not right now. So, uh, But honestly, the, you know, the money, the teams, the fact that there's going to be uh, six, eight teams in Europe, eight teams in North America salaried, buy Riot Games themselves to play this game, to play their own game. You're paying people to play their own game. How cool is that? I mean, that's like a kid's dream right there. It's like I'm going to play to play a computer game that I really like playing. Uh, but consequently, everyone's going to get to know them. They're going to become, I wouldn't say household names, that's going a bit too far, but they're going to be recognized names. So, you know, beyond the norms at the moment, there's a, there's a lot of players like Team Solar Mains of the World, CLGs that and now Taipei Assassins, that everybody knows the names of Toys and Stanley and Bibi, etc. of Taipei Assassins. But now the fact that there's going to be eight teams that are you're going to see every week, every week on the, sh on the streams, they, it's going to become, the viewing numbers are going to go up because people just recognize it. They're going to suddenly, they're already fans of the teams, I guess you could say, but they're going to become a bit more attached to it because they want to see their favorite player doing well in the team. So consequently, they want to tune in every week. So it's becoming like a, you know, a regular sport. League of Legends in 2012 has exploded. I mean, we saw the Season 1 Championships was the start of it, like the whole the numbers thing, the whole stream numbers, but then in Season uh, in season 2 in 2012, we saw the numbers just, just explode. Yeah, that's the right word for it, I think. I mean, we saw the peaks of each event getting higher and higher and higher and higher leading up to the Season 2 Championships. Um, when we saw that 1 million viewers, um, the numbers officially from Riot. And I think that it's the biggest game in the world, not in just in terms of players, obviously they've already confirmed that, but in terms of stream numbers as well, the, the audience to watch League of Legends as an eSport is unrivaled. The Asian scene is obviously very strong. We have OJ and Champions um, in Korea, which really started things off. You've got the two Azubu teams, you've got the Najin teams, you've got KT, MVP, so many big names in Korea. Um, in Southeast Asia, obviously, you've got Taipei Assassins, the, the team that won the Season 2 championships. You've got in in Southeast Asia, obviously, from Garena, the, the whole Premier League thing. I think it's really helped out the scene a lot because before that, it's hard, it was hard, I think, to, to bring the whole scene together, but Garena have managed that. And Singapore's local scene, I have to be honest, I'm not too familiar with the teams outside of Singapore Sentinels. Uh, we've had, obviously, the teams here today. Uh, the new Absolute Legends team have looked really, really strong, but it's only going to get stronger. That's the great thing that, uh, that Riot are doing right now with these localized tournaments going into Season 3, that the scene is going to develop and develop and develop, and I expect the, the Singaporean teams to be right up there at the top as well. 2013 is, if it follows the trend from 2011 to 2012 to 2013, it's going to be even bigger, you know, more mainstream media coming in there. The big TV channels are surely going to be interested when they see the numbers, when they realize how big it is. Um, I really want to see a lot more news coverage from, uh, from League of Legends um, in the mainstream media. Um, whether it'll be televised live, I'm not sure if that's the way that it needs to go because TV companies generally come into esports, they see the numbers, but then what they do is they change the format to fit their interpretation of what the game should be for TV and what people like. I hope that the format stays as it is right now, um, but it's gonna grow and I hope that it, it just, I've used the word exploded, I think about 30 times by now, uh, but I hope that it goes beyond that even. Um. Singapore has been waiting for a really big pro gaming tournament since, since 2005. 
and it's really important to us every season to go to a new territory and bring esports to people that don't, you know, they don't get to see MC, the Intellect Stream Masters champion, every day, or they don't get to have an autograph from Artosis every day. Uh, whereas in North America, for example, there are six or seven events a year where they get to enjoy that. So we pride ourselves in the fact that we get to bring magnificent events and also bring esports to countries that no, don't normally experience it. So traditionally, Intel Extreme Masters, uh, for the last four seasons, we visited Asia at least once every season. China is an important country for us. We've got tons of fans in China and the uh, Intel Extreme Masters Trophy is considered to be very, very prestigious in China. So we haven't uh, worked on our calendar yet for the next season. However, if I were to go to a bookies and place a bet, I would put all my money on us going to China again. And uh, if this event finishes with, you know, uh, fantastic energy from the local Singapore crowd, we will be happy to return here as well. No promises, but uh, we love to return to places where, you know, uh, we get the energy from the crowd and the enthusiasm and the passion from the local gaming fans. Well, eSports uh, this year in 2012 has exploded like never before. We have so many tournaments right now. Every single weekend, it seems, there is a big tournament that a lot of the best players in the world are flying to. In fact, I've had many months this year where I have flown to three different locations around the world, You know, whether it's Asia, Europe, America. Uh, and it's, it's like nonstop. There's a ton of money being put in, a ton of hype, a lot of viewers. Esports is becoming really embedded and real right now this year in 2012. Well, I tell you, it, there hasn't been a big tournament in Singapore in a really long time. The, the last really big international I can remember is uh, WCG 2005. Uh, so it's great to come back here, and there's actually a pretty good amount of fans. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I know that StarCraft 2 in particular isn't the biggest game in Singapore, but I met a lot of nice guys out here and they seem passionate about it. So, you know, that's really what matters with that. You know, as long as you have a small passionate scene, then it can grow because they show their love to others. I think 2013 is going to be our best year yet. I think all the leagues are starting to figure out how to do this, how to really package the content so that everyone can enjoy it for, you know, cheap or free, reasonable prices. Uh, and. Everyone's starting to work together a little bit more. The pro gamers are getting better, the commentators are getting better, the sponsors are coming in more and more, bigger ones all over the place. So I think that 2013 is absolutely going to be the best year yet. And to be honest, I think 2014 will beat that out. And, you know, esports is just going to get bigger and bigger and better and better.